This one is not done yet. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and finish it. I mean, why not? <clears throat> Do you want me to change the resolution back? I mean, no? This is okay? All right, so we'll go ahead and finish this one. Okay, this is the nice thing about the trace is, you know, it's easy to pick up from where we left off earlier. Okay, this is line three. We're back onto line six. Line six, once again, is going to return the invocation of S2 using N minus one to specify N. So in this case, we have to specify the two columns that we need. One is the return info cell, and one is the parameter N. Parameter N in this case is N minus one. The N of the N minus one refers to column D, which has a value of one. So that means the new N has a value of zero. Return info is basically the rest of line six. What else do I have to do when I'm done? So we have to say we have to go back to line six. The return will still have to be done. Return. The one plus still has to be done, but the invocation would be would have been resolved to a single value, and that's why it is replaced by a single question mark. Once we are done with setting up the columns, we can go in and start execution in the subroutine starting on line three. Line three checks, does n equal to zero? The answer is yes, n does equal to zero in this case. So we move on into the then um, portion of line four. Line four returns a constant of one. We locate the rightmost return info cell, copy and paste it, change the one, change the question mark to a return value of one, and we are done with line four. After line four, we get out of the conditional statement. We get to the end of the subroutine. So in other words, we get to line eight. Line eight deallocates both of these columns. And then we continue on to line six. But line six now looks like this. We turn one plus one. Well, we know how to calculate one plus one is two. So effectively, we are returning a value of two. When we return a value of two, we have to locate the rightmost return info cell, copy and paste it, change the question mark to a value of two, and that's the end of the return. That's the end of the return statement itself. Then we move on to line eight. Line eight is the end of the entire subroutine. We clear or deallocate the columns, and then we go back to wherever the return info cell is telling me to go back to. In this case, it is line nine. Line nine just wants to print a value of two. We don't have any more invocations, and then we are all done with post. So as I said, you know, the rest of the program is not that tricky. It's just that invocation to specify a parameter that is a little bit tricky. So let me save this. And there's one more thing that may be helpful. So just bear with me a little bit here. <clears throat> it has to do with you know the new notes. You know, I'm pretty sure I talked about it already. I just want to point out that I have revised the notes you know, one more time. So if you go to updated material on subroutines, which was posted before the 19th, it has been updated a little bit. So I added more clarifications. You might want to read it again, you know, just to make sure you pick up all the extra stuff that I have added recently. Okay. And it's taking too much time to do it. Problem loading page. Uh oh. Trouble. Yep, looks like trouble to me. Well, Moodle is still working, so that means only one, only that particular server is not responding. I'll take a look. I'll go home in about an hour or so. So. <laughs> <clears throat> But I have added extra stuff, so you might want to study the extra stuff that is already there. Okay, well, if you guys have questions, you know, let me know. You know, otherwise, we'll see, I'll see you guys next Friday for the final exam.